Hello, and welcome to episode 24 of the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast. I'm Christine. And I'm Sam. And this week we are continuing our 2022 vegan cookbook challenge with a recipe out of the book called Power Plates by Gina Hamshaw uh, of, of the Full Helping blog. Yes. Yes. And so this recipe was a bowl, and we love bowls. Love bowls. It's uh, the title of the recipe is Korean tempeh bowl. That sounds about right. (laughs) There was a dramatic pause there. Well, because I thought you said that the title of the book was Korean tempeh plate. (laughs) No, no. The title of the recipe. No, I got that. Korean tempeh bowl. And this is, um, I I, I didn't have a couple of things. Well, that's okay. Number one, kimchi. We didn't have any kimchi. So I made it without kimchi. Mm-hmm. It would have been probably more Korean tasting had we had kimchi. Oh, well, certainly. I mean, yeah. I think kimchi would give it a singular Korean flavor profile yeah, for sure. Um, but I think it's okay that we didn't have that. It was delicious. It was a delicious meal. Yeah, it yeah. had uh, carrots and zucchini and broccoli, broccoli and uh, rice, short brown... Short grain brown rice. Yeah. And tempeh, of course. With some tamari and some ginger and some garlic and all kinds of wonderful spices. Um, That was probably my favorite element uh, was just the spiciness of it. I loved it getting a hit of the fresh ginger every now and again. Yeah. Yeah. And then I thought that was great. Yeah. And then uh, we topped it with uh, a suggested topping was peanuts and I made uh, sriracha mayo. Which was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It turned out really and well. And green onions as well. Yeah. And then topped with green onions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like this recipe. Oh, I do too. I would too. probably make this again. This is definitely one that I hope you'll make again. And also, I'm really glad that you're delving into that book. Um yeah, I think you gave me this book for Christmas. I did. There's a telltale piece of tape with just a hint of some Christmas wrapping on the back of the book. <laughs> <laughs> then that was probably a Christmas gift, not this past Christmas, but the Christmas before. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that you gave it to me because when you wrap gifts, you will often tape the gift wrap to the actual gift. This is true. To make sure that your gift wrap is super tight. Yes, this is true. Yeah. I do do that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So this book, uh, name of the book again is Power uh, Plates. Power Plates. Um, is, uh, I, I just want to talk a little bit about the author, Gina Hamshaw. Uh, she has a, a blog, a food blog, the Full Helping uh, blog, it's called. Um, she has two cookbooks, actually, I believe. No, I'm sorry. She has three cookbooks. She has um, this particular book, Power Plates. She has another one called Food 52 Vegan. And then she has a third book called Choosing Raw. Um, She is an ethical vegan and a registered dietitian with uh, many years of nutrition, nutritional counseling. Um, Yeah. And so I checked out her blog. It's really nice. It's a really nice blog. Awesome. Yeah. So if you want to check out her blog. Oh, I will definitely check out her blog. And you out there want to check out her blog. The Full Helping Blog. The Full Helping yes. Blog. She's also on uh, Instagram. I found her on Instagram. Followed her there. Cool. Yeah. She's got lots of great recipes on the blog. Oh, well, I mean. Yeah. And she also does um, vegan coaching, vegan nutrition coaching, which is cool. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. No, so but that- this, was, this was an outstanding meal was absolutely wonderful. And Christine made this like the day after she made the ramen. So I was feeling incredibly spoiled <laughs> there for a couple of days. Yeah, like, oh my God. I, sometimes I get on a roll and it's like, you know, I feel inspired to continue cooking yeah. out of the cookbook. So I'm like, well, it doesn't matter if I make another recipe out of a cookbook. We can use that one That's right. next week or absolutely whatever. I'll just have another one under my belt. Mm-hmm. But yeah, sometimes I just like feel like I'm on a roll. So, yeah, I don't want to stop. But yeah, so to have that beautiful ramen one night and then this Korean tempeh bowl the next night, uh, totally, I was just spoiled. (laughs) You are spoiled. I am. (laughs) So yeah, check out that book. It's got a a lot of great recipes in it. Um, And they're all bowls. 
Yeah. And we just love bowls. We do. I mean, if if we can get the entirety of of our meal kind of all mixed together in one on one serving dish. <laughs> yeah, it's um there's a hundred recipes, a hundred nutritionally balanced one dish vegan meals. Mm, bring them on. Yeah. So I, I really do hope that you continue making recipes from that book because I mean, from the inaugural recipe they're outstanding. Yeah, and I would I would like to try again with the kimchi. Yeah. Because that's a that's a really specific flavor profile oh, that absolutely. I think would totally elevate the recipe. I agree. So um, yeah, I'm sorry I didn't have that. So I, well, also we didn't have the bean sprouts that it called for. Well, no, that was an option. And you know how I am with topping it bean with sprouts. bean sprouts. That was oh. that was an option, and we were out of bean sprouts. But yeah. bean sprouts are the best. So. Yeah, but I try to keep it sustainable. I try to pick recipes that have things that we already have on hand, so oh, that yeah. I'm not going out and spending a ton of money on groceries just oh, just for the recipe. Of course. So I'm with you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, so that's our recipe of this week. And then I thought this week um, it might be fun to talk about, since we're talking about food, I thought it might be fun to talk about some of the vegan staples that we try to keep in the house at all times. Yeah. To make making meals out of cookbooks or even meals, you know, off on the, the fly, on the fly or off the cuff is simpler because you have the staples that you need. Absolutely. So I made a little list. You all know how I like lists. You love lists. <laughs> yep. You just yeah, love so, the list. So yeah, th- these are just things that we like to keep in our pantry uh, so that we always have them on hand. I'll start with um, beans. Beans. Yeah. Always try to keep um, some canned beans. Mm-hmm. I also have some dry beans. You know what? I honestly haven't gotten around to using the dry beans that I have um, just because of convenience. I usually right. use canned um, but I try to keep black beans, uh, garbanzos, kidney beans, edamame, uh, and usually a white bean or two. Like cannellini beans or yeah. great northern beans. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, they're good for like creamy things. They're also like really that. great in soups. They're good in pasta, too. Yes, they are. Yes. People yep. don't often think about beans in pasta. But beans in pasta. Yeah. White beans in pasta is is really quite beautiful. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good textural combination. Yeah, it is. Um, also, grains we keep. Tons of grains. We always keep on hand uh, brown rice, uh, basmati or jasmine rice, uh, lentils, quinoa. Lentils aren't a grain. Right. Lentils, lentils are not are a grain. Beans. Lent- put like lentils back in the legume category. Yes. Um, and barley. And these things are pretty inexpensive. Yes. And it, especially if you buy them bulk, which That's is right. what I try to do. Yep. Absolutely. We try to buy bulk. And I mean, I'm particularly a, a fan of barley. I absolutely love it. I know. Um, so let's have a bowl with barley. <laughs> okay. <laughs> barley bowl coming up. Thank you. Um, pastas. I keep some pastas on hand. Spaghetti. Always try to have just some thin, regular thin spaghetti on yeah. hand. Um, I like wheat pastas. Yeah, generally I prefer the whole wheat pastas yeah. as well um, to white pastas. I think they're more flavorful. I uh, think they have a better texture. I think the only time that I want white pasta is when I make rigatoni. I like a white pasta for rigatoni for oh, some yeah. reason. I can go with that. So we try and keep on hand uh, spaghetti, rigatoni, uh, some lasagna noodles if I want to make a, a quick lasagna. Um, elbow macaroni or ziti and farfalle. I like farfalle. is good for salads and stuff. Yeah. So we'll use a lot more farfalle. In the summer. In the, yeah, when it, when it gets a little warmer. Yeah. And we also try to keep on hand at least one variety of Asian noodle. Either oh, yeah. soba noodles or ramen or udon are the three most common. Yeah, I forgot to write pantry. that and then you reminded me and I put it off in my uh, margin here and then I forgot to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, soba noodles or ramen or some sort of Asian noodle. Yeah, because we do tend to do a lot of Asian themed uh, meals like and so bowls having, and stuff like yeah. bowls again back to bowls um, bowls are life they they really kind of are yeah yeah uh let's see moving on root vegetables especially this time of year especially this time of year yeah i like i always keep uh sweet potatoes uh regular like a white potato or a russet potato um onions and um garlic and i i usually try to keep both like yellow onions or sweet onions or yellow and sweet onions mm-hmm. and red onions because red onions, cause red onions are, are good if you want uh, like a raw factor, if you're making tacos or something like yeah. that. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And keep them in a uh, dark-ish, cool, dry place. Mm-hmm. And, and they'll keep a little longer. Um, what else? Uh, other, oh, other canned goods besides beans, I like to keep, um, like, um, canned tomato. Yeah. Either whole tomato or diced tomato or crushed mm-hmm. or all three. Um, cause they come in handy. Absolutely. If you want to make a quick sauce or something like that. Yep. Or, or just want to add tomato to a dish and, mm-hmm. you know, you don't have fresh tomatoes and tomatoes aren't in season right now. So the tomatoes you're buying in the store, they're, they're barely tomatoes. They look yeah. like tomatoes. But they don't, they're not very tomatoey tasting. No. And they won't be for a few more months. Yeah. So, so and the canned tomatoes, I mean, they're canned fresh. So you're right. going to get a more fresh tomatoey taste out of a canned tomato than you will uh, a hothouse tomato this time of year. So, for sure. At least in our part of the country, we can't get fresh tomatoes right now. Uh, we also tend to keep olives. Oh, on that's, hand. that was next on the One list. One of the cans. Yeah. Okay. Yep. If olives. Food, olives. Um, tomato paste. Mm hmm. Um, and canned, we do keep some canned soups for those nights yeah. when we don't feel like cooking. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm a big fan of a, of a good soup, yeah. whether it's homemade or, or canned. I just yeah. absolutely love it. I so. recently made, um, Sam was a little under the weather with a cold and I made a vegetable soup. Which was so good. With some noodles in it mm-hmm. and noodle vegetable soup. Yep. It did turn out pretty well. It did. We Lots also, of kale and Yeah, I put so kale good. and stuff, you know. Soup is good when you're not feeling well. Mm-hmm. Get all those vitamins. Um, we like the Upton's Love soups. Upton soups. Um, usually I would say we like the Amy soups, but we are currently boycotting Amy and you should too. Right. Amy's Kitchen, not just Amy. <laughs> right. Not not personally. We're not personally boycotting <laughs> yeah. Amy. No. We've but... never met her. She could be a delightful I'm human I'm not sure being. that there even is an Amy. Um, but yeah, uh, you should uh, really consider boycotting amy's kitchen right now because they're uh there's a conflict with uh, some they're not treating their employees very well right now yeah. uh, if you want more information on that check out food empowerment project website and they have all the information they just did a uh, a live from like a picket line today oh wow yeah talking to some of the workers so very cool yeah i'll have to check that out yeah so canned soups like to keep those on hand Yep. And so most frequently you'll find Upton soups in our uh, pantry, but also there are several varieties of garden soups that oh, yeah. we're quite fond of. They're not bad. I, I do like the garden uh, chicken noodle. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's really very good. Yeah, um, in a pinch. Yeah. So even though we try not to eat processed foods yeah. all that often. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just good to keep a couple of cans Always on Always good to have some soup on hand. Because sometimes you don't feel like cooking. Hey, let's have um, soup and a sandwich or that's soup, right. a toasted vegan yep. cheese sandwich or something Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's good. Oh, and you can also get some really decent boxed soups. Yeah. Like there Wegmans. There are some good boxed soups Wegmans out there. Wegmans brand actually has some decent box soups. Just with the canned and the box soups, you just have to watch your, the sodium. The sodium, exactly. So always check the sodium. But yeah. Oh, no. Wegmans makes that beautiful boxed butternut squash yeah they make a soup. butternut squash gorgeous. um they make a couple of creamy soups that are actually vegan i mean they're yeah. not intentionally vegan but they're accidentally vegan yeah and they're they're pretty good they're pretty decent for a uh, box soup mm-hmm. um also keep uh i usually keep a couple containers of veggie stock yes yeah Vegetable stock, and also we tend to keep on hand Trader Joe's miso ginger right. broth. Um, yeah, that's it's good stuff. My personal favorite base for just about anything. Yeah. Um, we steam dumplings in it. We will use it as a base for stir fry. We'll, you know, use it as the broth of a Asian themed soup, that kind of thing. It's, yeah. It's amazing stuff. Yeah. It's good to keep on hand. And um, like we did, we just got turned on to that like last year. I don't know. Did they always carry that or? I don't know. We just like, never if saw we it. Just, like had been unaware of it yeah. beforehand. But I just know that there was one day we were walking down that one aisle and I was like, oh my gosh, miso ginger broth. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and it's really inexpensive. It's too. inexpensive and it is so, so flavorful. Yeah. And then I also keep on hand a bouillons, mm-hmm. you know, so if you don't have stock on hand, you can make your own. Right. I keep some better than bouillon and I have a couple of other ones. I'm not even sure what the brand are, just vegan 
vegan chicken bouillon and vegan beef bouillon. Mm-hmm. Um, those are good to keep because they're shelf stable and all that jazz. Actually, I think um, it depends on what type you get. The powder, powdered ones, of course, are shelf stable. Um, the one better than bouillon that I have does need refrigerated. Mm-hmm. It needs to be refrigerated. But we keep those on hand. Uh, tortillas. I always keep tortillas on hand. And Sam laughs at me. I do laugh Because <laughs> it's kind of like the thing with the shredded <laughs> vegan cheese. At one point, we had like 12 packages of shredded vegan cheese or something. Some inordinate number. Because I, I'm at the store and I'm like, do we have? I'll just Christine get another Christine has a habit of not checking the fridge before she goes Yeah, sometimes I don't. <laughs> and I used to do the same thing with tortillas. And I'd be like, I don't know, do we have tortillas? And at one point we had like six things of tortillas. The answer to the question, do we have tortillas, is always <laughs> yes. Yes, but do we have the right tortillas or enough <laughs> of the tortillas? Because, you know, they come in different sizes for different applications. And... Yes, I totally get it. Yeah, but so at the I... same time, you do tend to go a little overboard on the tortillas. Sometimes, just because I love tortillas. And, you know, you can make a wrap out of anything. True. They're great for, like, if you have leftovers from some veggie thing that you made. Oh, yeah. Hey, let's, you know, add a little of this, add a little of that, and make wraps. Oh, absolutely. I'm I'm not in any way, shape, or form negating the versatility of the tortilla. And (laughs) I'm also a big fan of tortillas, as you very well know. But uh, it is kind of hysterical that we end up with piles of tortillas in the fridge sometimes. Yeah, sometimes we do. Uh, let's see, tortillas and, oh, oh, um, like flavor enhancers, like, um, tamari, like coconut aminos, soy sauce, sesame oil, liquid smoke. Um, always try to keep some apple cider vinegar on For hand. Sure. Always try to keep, um, like peanut butter, tahini. Mm-hmm. Always, I always try to keep those in stock. Yes. Because if I'm making something and it's like, uh, what flavor profile am I going oh, and for? so. And miso. We generally yeah, have miso, miso paste in the refrigerator. Mm-hmm. So if you keep these things on hand, it's really easy. Once you get, you know, used to using these things on a regular basis, it's really easy to just whip up. Like tonight, I just made like a stir fried rice with vegetables and tofu. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have to buy anything. I didn't need to no. look up a recipe or anything. It was just what was coming out of the fridge yeah. and the pantry. Yeah. yeah. And it was lovely. Thank you. You're very welcome. (laughs) Thank you for cooking. (laughs) It's my pleasure. (laughs) We also always keep nuts and seeds. Oh, how we love nuts and seeds. Yes. What what nuts and seeds do we keep on hand, Sam? Okay. Generally speaking with nuts and seeds, let's start with the seeds first. Um, So there are almost always sunflower seeds and pepitas in our house. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan of sunflower seeds and Christine is just absolutely bonkers about pepitas. I love pepitas. Yes. And uh, pepitas are pumpkin seeds. Yes, pepita. Uh, yes, pepitas. Um, also for seeds, we generally speaking will have flax seeds mm-hmm. around. We frequently will put flax seed on top of a salad mm-hmm. um, or on top of a pasta dish just as a little bit of extra flavor and a little bit of extra protein. Mm-hmm. Um, Ooh, little um, tip for flaxseed. Keep it refrigerated. Yes. Um, Because there's a lot of oil in flaxseed, and that oil can go rancid if you leave it uh, on a shelf somewhere. Yes. So you should definitely be refrigerating your flaxseeds. Yeah. Um, And we get whole flaxseeds. If we need ground flaxseed, I have a spice grinder. I just toss them in there and grind them. Yes, exactly. And then for nuts, um, we really haven't met a nut that we don't like. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we really haven't. Well, it takes one to know one. It's true. And I think we, we are both kind of nuts ourselves. We are nuts for nuts. We are. And our nut preferences are actually quite different. Uh, Christine tends towards almond and cashews. Uh-huh. Uh, I tend towards hazelnuts and Brazil nuts. Uh-huh. Um, but we tend to keep all of those things in the house as much as possible. Right now, we are in a bit of a nut deficit. On your end. Yes. On my end, yes. Um, I have a giant thing of walnuts. I have... Oh, walnuts. Yeah, walnuts are, are one of the great equalizers. We both love walnuts. Yeah. So we have plenty of walnuts on hand. I always keep raw cashews on mm-hmm. hand to make like cashew creams yep. and stuff like that. Um, and then if you want roasted cashews, stick them on a tray and put, them in, them. The, put them in the oven. Simple. Yeah. Um, what? Oh, peanuts. I always mm-hmm. try to keep a, a jar of peanuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, pistachios. Yeah, we do have some pistachios. We frequently have pistachios. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, nuts, nuts and nuts. seeds. Um, they're good to add into salads and stuff for where you need like a textural element yeah. and they're good for you. Absolutely. They're a really great source of healthy fat. Yeah. Um, give, you know, a little added protein boost. Um, they're just fantastic. We love them. We do. Yeah. We really do. <laughs> like I said, we're nuts for nuts. <laughs> I think we're just nuts in Can general. you think of anything else that we regularly keep on hand to um, make our lives simpler? So the only other thing really um, to consider are some of the refrigerated items that are never out of our fridge okay. um, for very, very long. Um, we're not considering really kind of the the extras, like the, the icing and the candles on the cake. So right. not, not anything processed, no actual meat replacers or anything like that. Right. Um, those are not pantry items that we, we keep around indefinitely. No. But in our fridge, you will definitely always find uh, tofu, at least one variety of tofu. Yeah. Usually there will be a, a super firm tofu, a firm tofu, and at least one baked tofu, because yeah. we both like the texture of baked tofu for stir fries. Um, you'll also always find tempeh um, in our fridge. Yep. Um, it's very, very rare that we do not have tempeh in no, the fridge. because it's so versatile, you know? I mean, yeah. I can you can make tempeh bacon with it. it. You can use it on a sandwich. It's good in stir fries. It's yep. good in bowls. It's, um, it's just good. Yeah. It's it, good in ramen. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> As we found out. It takes... It takes on flavor really well, mm -hmm. tempeh. So, yeah. So you'll always find tofu or tempeh um, in our fridge. And then usually at least one variety of nut milk. Um, yeah. Christine generally drinks cashew milk these yeah, days. Yeah, the only milk I usually use is um, in my coffee. Mm -hmm. And I like cashew milk in my coffee. Yeah. And I love a really nice turmeric latte. So I like to have those made with coconut milk. So we frequently right. have coconut milk in the refrigerator as well. Yeah. And luckily, um, most of the nut milks, they keep for quite a while. They do. Definitely much longer than, than, dairy, than milk. dairy milk does. For sure. So you can have a couple of different varieties and not worry about them going bad on you, you know? Absolutely. And then the other thing, the other two things I think that we keep in the fridge pretty regularly um, for the sake of convenience, not that we could not make these things ourselves, mm -hmm. but our hummus and guacamole. Right. Yeah, we tend to buy both of those. Um, I'm an absolute fiend for Ithaca lemon dill hummus. I know you are. It's so insanely good. <laughs> like there are no words really to describe this yeah. hummus. And it's I don't know if we amazing. I don't know if we've said this before on the podcast, but I really want to make a lemon dill hummus so that we can make it. It's such more. It's so much more affordable. Oh, absolutely! So much. To, more, it would be to make so it much more economical for yeah. us to make it ourselves. But this hummus is just ridiculous. Um, and then we also tend to buy guacamole because it is difficult to get avocados in season. Yeah, it, here. they're Even, really hit or miss. They anymore, really are. You know. And then I mean, everybody out there that eats avocado knows how this goes. You buy an avocado. If you're not going to use it right away, you don't get the one that's like. You can feel it's yeah. ready. So you buy one that's a little harder on the harder side. It's a little underripe. And then yeah. you, you're checking it like every day. Is this ready? Is this ready? And, and it's like, nope, nope, nope. Oh, too late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's this small window yeah. where an avocado is perfection. Yes. And if you miss it, you miss it. And you're scraping brown off of it. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I love to buy fresh avocado, but it's it, right now it seems like... I don't know. Well, it it's makes no sense at this time of year. Yeah. It really makes no sense any time of year around no, here because avocados are do not, not native. grow. Yeah. Yeah. They don't grow around here. No, they don't. Oh, I wish they did. Oh, me too. I would plant 20 avocado trees. Oh my gosh. Yes. We would have a forest of avocado trees. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? It would be so awesome. Yeah. One time when I was in Kauai, Hawaii, I was staying in like, it was like an Airbnb, a little, like a bungalow kind of thing. And outside of this little house were, uh, there was avocado trees, there was papaya trees, mm. there was banana palms, um, and like various citrus, citrus trees uh, of heaven. some of which I had never had before. That's cool. Yeah. These like combinations 
I'm sure there's names for them, but I don't know. It was like a combination between an orange and a lime. Mm. And yeah, just amazing. You've never had like an avocado until you've had one right off the tree. Yeah. At per, you know, just at that perfect yeah. ripeness. Absolutely. Ugh. And papaya, same thing. Off, right off the tree. It's amazing. Yes. One thing you might not know about avocado, though. Um, because of, I don't know if you've been like to an apple orchard where the apples fall on the ground, mm. right? And there's usually bees and stuff like that. Yeah. But with avocados, because of the fat content, they attract flies. So instead of bees, yes. Oh, interesting. Because of the fat content, it's like it can get kind of bad mm-hmm. if if you're not picking up the fruit off the ground, right? So. I, I don't know. I don't know what made me think of that. <laughs> so in the future, when we have a forest of avocado trees <laughs> right. somewhere, yeah, we will know to be sure to pick the fruit up off the ground immediately. Yeah. Otherwise, so not you, you get tons of flies. flies. Oh, or rats. You get rats, too. Oh. I'd I mean, rather, yeah. and any place that there's palm trees. and There that, are rats. Yeah. Yes. Any, any of you that have ever lived or stayed anywhere near where there's palm trees, there's palm rats. They mm-hmm. live in the trees. And one time... It, in this same place in Hawaii, I was sitting on this little deck on like a chaise lounge thing. Mm-hmm. And right behind me was a small palm tree. And I thought I saw a little gecko because, you know, they're, they're everywhere there. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, and I got up because I saw the little tip of a tail. Yeah. And it was a rat. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, rat, rat. I imagine the rat didn't hurt you, though. No, no. He just, he crawled back up the tree and I moved my chair to the other side of the porch. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. See, simple. I'm like, I don't want rats falling on me. Live and let live. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I don't know what made, made me think of that. But I don't either. Yeah, it's a little, little story We're for you. We're just talking about palm trees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so those are the staples that we try to keep in the house. I just thought it might be helpful um, maybe for some new vegans out there that that aren't quite sure. I, I often see people ask, you know, what should I be buying? You know, what should I be eating? I, I, I can't just have salad all the time, mm-hmm. you know. And I think um, when, you, when you first go vegan, if you weren't like vegetarian ever before in your life and, and you're going really from like a meat and potatoes diet, to veganism, it can be a little um, daunting, intimidating. Yeah, it yeah. can be a little intimidating to not, you know, to not know what to buy. Right. And um, these staples, I mean, these are just regular foods. They're not, <laughs> you know, you don't have to buy vegan beans. Beans are vegan. That's right. You know what I mean? So these are just like regular staples that are good to keep on hand to, um, you know, to fix quick meals. Yeah. They're and, kind of good all-purpose things. Yeah, and you can fix a, a well-balanced meal if you have these things on hand. Grains and, and legumes and, yeah. and and things like that. Right. Right? Yeah. And then also, of course, supplementing. I mean, probably the, the food that we go through fastest is our fresh, fresh vegetables. Well, yeah. Without question. Um, we easily buy fresh vegetables two or three times a week um, because we eat so many of them. I mean, fresh veg is going to be a staple of most vegans diets right so you know salad greens cucumbers radishes tomatoes bell peppers um, i gotta have my bell peppers yes she's crazy for the bell peppers i mean almost everything i cook has bell peppers in it almost yep. everything yeah but then zucchini and yellow squash and broccoli and cauliflower and brussels sprouts and asparagus and <laughs> Yeah, I could just go on and on because these are all um, of my favorite the, things. Basically the, the produce section. <laughs> the produce section of, yeah. of any decent grocery store. Yeah. Um, we go through it probably twice in the space of a week. Yeah. yeah. We eat a lot of edge. We do eat a lot of edge. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's something to also be aware of that we consider some of those things staples as well. Right. Like we, there's always a head of cauliflower in the fridge. There's right. always some cucumbers. There's always some radishes, carrots, celery, um, just, you know, your basics. There's always broccoli. There's more often than not Brussels sprouts. Right. So we always have veg options. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I have trouble with is, and this will change once um, the seasons change and we're getting our farm chair again, greens. It's hard to keep enough greens 
but then not have them go bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Finding that, that balance, the balance. that fine line. Yeah. Um, and part of it is packaging issues. Mm-hmm. Um, we can't find, I, at least our grocery store doesn't really carry nice, um, unpackaged greens. Right. Like, uh, they didn't used to sell greens in plastic bins. <laughs> you used to no. just buy lettuce, right? Right. And very rarely is there any decent looking, um, head lettuce. Yeah. Head lettuce yeah. or even leaf lettuce. Right. Um, because, you know, it doesn't travel well. No. So, it's hard the the sizes of it's like either you get what, two pounds of greens, yep. or w- enough for us to make salad once, right? You know, that's what the problem is. So we get the bigger thing of greens, mm-hmm. and then we're using it. But then be, right before it's gone, there they've turned. You know. Well, I think that's that's also just kind of seasonal because once winter turns back into spring, we'll be going through greens a lot faster. Yeah, we eat more salads when the weather's warmer. As for soon sure. as the weather gets warmer, we turn into salad fiends and yeah. everything is salad, salad, and more salad um, because it's one of those things that neither of us ever get sick of. Yeah. And we just absolutely love it. Um, but right now, because we're eating warm dishes most right. of the time, we're eating bowls and soups and stews. Um, we're not having ginormous salads right every day, yeah, like we would in the spring. So yeah, well then I that's why I try to keep a little bit of kale. So at yep. least we're getting greens, you yep. know, put it in a soup or something, yep. and because you need your greens, yeah, greens I'm, are important. I'm not a huge fan of kale salads. I know you like them. I love them. Uh, I'm not a huge fan. I like I like my kale cooked. I love them. I mean, and this again was something that I discovered through um, our Blue Apron phase. Yeah, we, there, we did have a couple of recipes that were kale salads. That had kale salads, yeah. and it was all about massaging the kale right. with citrus juice or yogurt you had to break or it down a little hummus bit. or something yeah. to break down some of those really, really tough kale fibers yeah. um, and make it just more edible and yeah. more digestible. Yeah. And... When I learned that, I was like, seriously, where has this been all my life? <laughs> How have I not known to massage kale with something that will help break those fibers down? Yeah. Because it just turns it into this lovely, palatable, raw green. Yeah. I mean, and I, I, I like the flavor of raw kale. It's a textural thing for me. I I don't know. I prefer it cooked. Yeah. I'll, I'll take kale in any form. Yeah. So, yeah. Try and get your greens. Try and get your greens in. Got to get the greens. Yeah. Um, so I hope that that list helped. I hope I, you know, we weren't boring you with just listing what's in our pantry. <laughs> 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 and I hope that there was some useful information. Um, or maybe you could just go, yeah, beans. That's right. I keep beans too. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> beans are essential. Yeah. Beans are essential. And grains are essential. Remember to combine your beans and your grains. Beans and grains. Yes. Yep. Because then it creates a complex carbohydrate. Am I correct? I'm not a nutritionist. Nutritionist. Complete protein. Um, yeah, it's a complete protein. Right. That's what I was looking for. Not a complex carbohydrate. No. Although rice and Although, beans. Although, yes, they are. Is complex. rice and beans a complex carbohydrate? They are. And a complete protein. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I think that's really all we have. Uh, Stay tuned next week for our next recipe. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to even give you any hints because, honestly, I don't know what it is. (laughs) (laughs) She hasn't made the selection yet. I haven't made the selection yet. Um, I'll just do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, Please email us any uh, ideas that you have as far as, like, cookbooks you think we should check out, recipes we should check out food blogs we should check out if you have a food blog shoot us an email oh please tell us to check it out because i might not be aware of you um if you have a cookbook drop us an email um i would love to check out your cookbooks if you all have cookbooks out there uh what else um oh hey if you listen to our podcast on a platform that allows you to subscribe please subscribe yes because that helps our visibility 
a ton. It certainly does. Yeah. We're still holding our fundraiser for Mockingbird Farms Animal Sanctuary on our Buy Me a Coffee site. That's mm-hmm. buymeacoffee.com backslash cucumbers. And we are still looking for yeah. that first $50 donor. I know we keep harping on this. I know. I feel but... like we're begging. Um, well, I mean... <laughs> I'm willing to Excuse beg. Me. I have no problem with that. <laughs> it's for a good cause. Yeah, and our first fifty uh, dollar donor, and we're matching all these donations, mind you. Yes, but our first fifty dollar donor will receive a limited edition Compassion and Cucumbers T-shirt. Yes, and a free audiobook copy of Confessions of an Animal Rights Terrorist. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Written by Karen Levinson and narrated by yours truly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, check that out. It's buymeacoffee.com backslash cucumbers. Um, do you have any other news to share? Or No, just that uh, after being sick last week, I'm finally back on track on my audiobook schedule. Yeah. And so uh, my next audiobook, which is Peace to All Beings uh, by, Car- uh, sorry, not Karen, by Judy Carmen. Yeah. Uh, also uh, coming from Lantern Publishing. Yeah. Uh, should be out in the next couple of weeks because I'll be wrapping that up in the next couple of days. It's exciting stuff. Yes, it is. All right. Well, I guess we'll wrap things up then and we'll say we'll see you next week. I hope you all have a great week. Um, spring is in the air. Oh, she's trying. Mama Nature yep. is really trying spring to is bring in us the some air. spring. Yep. So we'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for all your support. We love you. We love you. And goodbye. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> If you'd like to support the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast, you can go to buymeacoffee.com backslash cucumbers and buy us a cup of coffee. Thanks so much for listening and for supporting us in what we're doing. We're really having a good time with it.